Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we're going to go over using an Annex 2 to connect a new PanelView Plus 6 on Ethernet to our existing remote I.O. network without changing any of the existing ladder logic on the SLC processor. In this video we'll cover how the ladder logic is currently communicating on the network. We'll change the IP address and firmware in the Annex. We'll configure the Annex module using a CSV file. And finally, we'll add the Annex module in Factory Talk View Studio. The Annex 2 gateway is shipped with the link local IP address of 169.254.42.84. Which can be accessed regardless of what subnet your computer is using. So I'll plug the Annex 2 into a switch that my PC is plugged into as well. I'll open a browser and enter the module's link local IP address. Now, if the page does not come up for you, it could be that your computer is not set to route the path of the address. And there are a few quick steps that can fix that. So first we'll open up the command prompt. If you're using Windows 7, you need to open the command prompt as an administrator. Uh, if you're using Windows XP, then you don't have to worry about that. And we'll find out the current IP address of the computer that you're using. So once command prompt is up, we'll type ipconfig and what we need is the IPv4 address and this is the address the computer is using. So when you find your address, write it down. Now I'll enter a command that will tell the computer to route the annex modules link local address. So I'll type route space add space 169.254.0.0 mask 255.255.0.0 then a space and then enter your IP address then a space and then metric 20 hit enter and if everything was entered correctly you should be able to access the Annex 2's web page now. And here's the Annex 2's web page. Now we're going to type in the default IP address and choose an Annex configuration. I'll change the module to static IP address. And I'll name it Annex AB-HMI. Then I'll set the IP address, the net mask, and the gateway. And last, we'll choose the HMI firmware. And when all this is done, select Submit, and then click Continue. And then after waiting 60 seconds, type in the IP address that we just assigned the module. And that should take you to the module's configuration page. If you're having issues pulling up the web page with the new firmware, just clear your internet cache and reload the page. Now we'll open up RSLogix 500 and take a look at the current Rio scanner project so that we can emulate the settings. The SLC is using a 1747SN remote I.O. scanner to communicate to the old HMI. Before we can program the Annex module, we need to look at a couple of settings in the program. First, we'll look at the G data in the remote I.O. scanner card. This will tell us the rack, group, and length that the existing HMI was using to communicate to the I.O. files in the processor. This scanner card is set up at rack 2, group 0, for a quarter rack. So now we can create the CSV file for the Annex module to communicate to the SLC. You can get a sample of the CSV file off of the Annex product CD or you can copy it from the module's web page under View Active Configuration and copy that to Notepad or Excel. 
First, we'll make sure that the baud rate is the same as the existing network. Next, we'll set up the I.O. table, change the rack to 2, the starting word is 1, and ending at 1, which makes it a quarter rack. Next, we'll determine what files the block transfer reads and the block transfer writes are using in the existing program. Here in the logic, there are two copy statements pushing three words into the M01 file. This is the card in slot 1, which is the Rio scanner, starting at 100 and 200. These are the control words for the BTRs and BTWs. The first word is the transmitted words and error codes. The second word is the word count for the BTR or BTW. And the last word is the rack, group, and slot. Here on rung 6 is the BTR. We know this is the BTR because it's using M11110, and the control word in M01100 is configured as a BTR. M01200 is configured as a BTW. M1 is input data, M0 is output data. The copy statement is copying two words from our N7 file to the scanner card M01210 and then out to the remote I.O. network. Knowing the BTR and BTW information, we can now finish configuring the CSV file. First, we'll configure the BTW. Start by changing the rack to 2. Group and slot can stay at zero. The file number that the block transfer write was using in logic was N7. The CSV doesn't need the file letter, just the number. It's using the tenth word in the N7 file, so we'll enter 10, and the length of the BTW was two words. And now we'll edit the definition on what we just programmed for our own documentation. Next, we'll configure the block transfer read for rack 2, group 0, and slot 0. The file that the block transfer read was using was B11, so we'll put in B11 starting at word 0 for a length of 1 bit. And again, we're just going to edit the definition. Now just save the document as a CSV and I'll place it on the desktop. Go to the Annex Modules webpage and select Configure Rio to Ethernet IP and select Choose File. Choose the file that we just created and select Send File to Annex. If everything has gone to plan, the next screen that shows up will be our configuration. We'll open up Factory Talk View Studio and choose New Project. We'll give it a name. Then, in the Displays Partition, I'll make two numeric displays in the main display. Now on the bottom left, we'll expand RS Links Enterprise and choose Communication Setup. Click Add, name it SLC Annex, right click on the Ethernet path and click Add Device. Expand the Net ENI option at the bottom, 
Then expand the PLC5 family and select PLC5 40C and hit OK. We'll name the device SLC Annex and then give it the IP address of the Annex module. Select the device we created on the right and the new shortcut that we created and click Apply. This will tie the tag browser to the IP address of the Annex module. The last thing we need to do here is click on the PLC 540 and click Copy from Design to Runtime and then click OK. This will make the files in the SLC available over Ethernet. Next, we can assign the numeric displays a specific file number. Right click on a display and choose Properties. Select Connections, then click on Tag. Right click on the SLC Annex folder and choose Refresh All Folders. Expand the name of your Annex module, then expand Online. You should see the files for the input, Output, Status, the BTR and BTW files that we defined in the CSV file, which were 7 and 11. Expand the file you want to allocate to the numeric display and choose it from the window on the right. Once completed, select OK. Although it displays the B11 file as N11, it will still communicate to the B11 file as the numbers are unique and the letters don't matter. Do this for both numeric displays and either go online using Factory Talk or download your project to your panel view. And this concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or visit our website. Happy training!